Now on BBC One, it's over to Crinkly Bottom, where Noel's throwing a party. There goes another bag of crisps. And the villagers are really tramping on. What a week. Oh, phew, has it been a busy week. I mean, I've done a loft conversion here. I, I've converted it into an attic. And then I... I, I, spent, I spent a lot of the week visiting the sick. I did. And I visited the... Yes, well, I was, oh, yes. I visited the crinkly bottom pawnbroker who's been very, very ill. He's, he's had mumps. But the good news is the doctor says he'll make a complete recovery, although his sign's going to have to come down. <laughs> and then... <laughs> I was, uh, was actually subjected to the most terribly embarrassing thing this afternoon at the Crinkly Bottom race course. I mean, this was so embarrassing because the stewards, the stewards disqualified my horse, Serengeti Boy. They did. They said it was a giraffe I painted brown. <laughs> I mean, he might not be a great racer, but he's fantastic in a photo finish, I tell you. <laughs> and who's going to get the surprise prize? The prize for the person who gets the biggest surprise this week. Could it be you on NTV? The shock of a gotcha for John Pertwee. Or is it going to be me that gets the surprise? Two shows to go! Maybe it's the parents of Brendan in Wait Till I Get You Home. Nice guy, Brendan. I said to him, your dad ever do anything naughty when he was a little boy? He used to throw stones at you know, old ladies in the distance. He doesn't do it anymore. It's too busy working. And a gotcha for John Pertwee. He's curious. Yes, he's uh, serene and baffled and bemused and animated. He's surprised <laughs> and he's thrilled when he gets the gotcha. <laughs> NTV, we've got a super snooper camera in NTV and somebody here in the great house is going to go into the big pork pie. But first, the news we've been waiting for all week. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't laugh, don't laugh at him, no, don't laugh at him. No, it, it's because it's the instructions say open carton and serve chilled. And... <laughs> all there. Let's just uh, quickly catch up with some of the, some of the wonderful... <laughs> just, just checking it was the one that was there a moment ago. Good news! Good news! Good news! Good news! Yes, good news. Crinkley Bottom Road Safety Committee have put up two new signs in the village. Now, the first one says accident black spot ahead, and the second one says last chance to change into clean underwear. <laughs> Controversial news. <laughs> is, that, is that the best acting you can do for controversial? Right. Crinkly Bottom Wanderers have sacked their striker, Jigsaw Jessup. He's called Jigsaw because he keeps falling to pieces in the box. <laughs> Good news! Yay! Crinkly Bottom magistrates have decided to give the village shoplifter a second chance. They said they were very impressed. No, 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 they said they... <laughs> Wrong reaction. They said... <laughs> They said they were very impressed with the way in which he's been managing to help himself. <laughs> OK. Oh, 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 that's kind of you. Oh, no, bottoms up. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, excuse me a moment, excuse me. This is an early one. You. Oh, I've got a feeling these hinges are going to be busy today. <laughs> about people who live in the country. They get a bit of country air and they go mad. Like, you never get people in cities doing that sort of thing, do you? They... Just 
sit there. Quiet, 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 please. Quiet, quiet. Thank you. Thank you. Right, who are you? I'm Barbie. And you're a pearly queen. That's right. What a fine, fine tradition this is. An association started at the beginning of this century to maintain the rigorous obligations of the costermongers of the East End of London. Yeah, you're a bit of a weirdie, aren't you? <laughs> who are you? Cliff. Cliff. All right. I wonder why we shouldn't do it. Come on. It's got to be them. It's got to be them, definitely. <laughs> this started off as some sort of fertility rite in pre-Christian days. You imagine a fertility rite. How could you get near anyone dressed like that? 0891 800 311. If you think Cliff, the Morris dancer, please, please, please. 0891 800 322. If you feel that it should be the Pearly Queen, it can't be the Pearly Queen. It can't be the Pearly Queen. Shake your leg, shake your leg. That's it, take him away. For goodness sake, take him away. Here we go. Dial, dial, Morris Dance. Dial for the Morris Dancers, please. Here it is. Your weekly compost c contest. <laughs> oh, maybe I'll try it the first time. The final game! Tracy, Tracy and Gary, ladies first. Hello, Tracy Railton. Uh, Tracy and Gary are engaged, incidentally. Tracy hopes this is third time lucky. You've been engaged through the <laughs> Consequently, Gary calls her Ratners. She won't wear skirts because she's got fat knees. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Then there's Gary. Gary doesn't wear skirts either, but he does take Tracy a Saturday morning cup of tea in bed wearing only a leopard skin thong. That's... <laughs> He uses his dad's van for work because he doesn't want his mates to know he's got a Skoda. <laughs> and they do now, and his mates at work call him Bloodhound because he's always chatting up the company secretary. Did you know about that? I didn't. You did? No. <laughs> sort that out after the paddle game. I am offering you a, ra oh, oh, a radio alarm clock. Fantastic. <laughs> my lips, my shoe lips. Turf, turf. We're clearing out the cupboards. Five videos. We've got Prue's cocktails up there. And a whole host of other things. Something at the top that you might want to gamble for for as well. But last week, well, something terrible happened to him. I mean, two weeks ago he fell down the chimney, but last week we gunged Frank Carson. Fr Frank, no hard feelings, no hard feelings, Frank. <laughs> he looks to be in very good form, looks to be in good form. And all we need to start is, give me a question! I've got a question for you. I've got a question for you, Noel. I've got a question for you. Why don't you push off? Ha! Now, that's a rhetorical question. There's not actually an answer to it. Push off. Oh, I'll tell our mum. <laughs> give me a question. Give me a question, please. Someone give me a question. <laughs> no, I've got a question for you. Do you think you could get Sammy the chamois to run his chamois over these glasses or something like that? <laughs> you got a sensible question. Yeah, where would you find the Dyax tribe? Is it New Zealand or Borneo? Dyax tribe. Are the Dyax tribe of New Zealand or Borneo? What do you think? Oh, no. uh, quick, quick. Borneo. Borneo, you're right. Give me a question. <laughs> Question. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Where is Death Valley? California or Australia? Do you know it's unbearably hot in the Death Valley? I went there once. It was 120 deg degree, 120 degrees yes, in yes. the shade. That's hot. <laughs> it's hot. You want to try doing the gag? I tell you. <laughs> and I tell you something else. What? I was very clever. What did you do? I didn't go in the shade. Didn't you? I didn't. That nearly got a laugh. We'll do that again. <laughs> That's funny. What do you reckon? Is Death Valley? Is California or Australia? California. Yes, you're right. They're brilliant. <laughs> House has a front door that won't open from the outside. A Barrett House. <laughs> <laughs> is it 10 Downing Street or Buckingham Palace? And it's got to be 10 Downing Street. It's the only way to keep Maggie Thatcher out again. Okay, which has got the door that doesn't open then um, uh, from the outside? Buck Palace or Oregon number 10, uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, have you noticed I look more like Liz Kershaw's twit every day? Oh. Have you got a question? Yes, I have. Um, now, who made the slogan famous, you two can have a body like mine? Was it Frank Carson or Charles Atlas? 
Actually, I think it was Charles Atlas because when he died, they didn't bury him, you know, they got a 16 stone bully to kick sand all over him. Well done. Yes. First time he's got it right today. And so, is it Frank Carson or Charles Atlas? Frank Carson. No! <laughs> oh, that was that. Oh. It's all over. Radio alarm clock. Yes, you got as far as that. You get a pair oh, of those right, lifts, lovely. so you can have some turf, and I'll throw in the video films as well. <laughs> yes, what is it, Liz? Can I do something that I've been bursting to do for seven years, Noel? Unburst yourself, Liz. Oh, no, Bruno! Oh, Bruno! Oh, Bruno. Stop, <laughs> Kershaw. I'll get you back. Are you going to gamble? Are you going to gamble? Gamble, gamble. They're throwing all that away and they get a fantastic night out at the theatre with all the bits and stuff and whatever. Well done. And what was that? The Don Pertwee gotcha has the most amazing end to it. You can hear the penny drop about four miles away. I'm fed up. Oh, lucky you. I've only had a sandwich. Mm. Uh, oh, well, I tell you what, seeing you're here, you've lived in Crinkley Bottom a long time. Yes. Yeah? Yes. It's quite a long time. Yes. Have yeah. you seen many changes? Uh, no, what? No, no, no. No? No, no? no. I just wondered whether, you know, if Queen Victoria came to Crinkley Bottom, she'd recognise the place. No. Why not? Because she's never been here. <laughs> oh, right. Now, why were you fed up? I'm fed up because my, my wife has said that I must come round here and complain about the noise. Oh, well, when did she say that? 21 weeks ago. <laughs> Well, She's still here. Do you want me to do something about the noise? Yes. Turn it up! All oh, right, OK. Well, we'll keep it going. We'll put fire, I think. Only the most famous faces come to Crinkley Bottom's most famous front door. The door to Noel's house party. We've got a bit of, oh, so sorry. We've got a bit of extra tension this week because we've had a very nasty outbreak of nits and fleas in Crinkley Bottom, haven't we? And some of the people, some of the people, are, see, there they are scratching away at this moment. We're, we're going to play past the pork pie. Where it stops, when the music stops, you must say your name and I'll ask you a question. If the questions tally with the truth I'm looking for, you are the person for the pork pie. So we'll start off with you and the music starts now. Pass along, please. <laughs> ah, it stopped! No, 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 it stopped! It stopped! It stopped! What's your name? Nadine Nadine. 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 Did you go to a pantomime last Christmas? No. On we go. It's you, it's you, and your name? Steve. Steve. Woo! Steve, do you work in an office? No. Pass it on forward and along. Ah. 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 Now, the one, um, your name? David. David. David, do you have hairs on your chest? No. <laughs> um, David, we've we've unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately missed the person who we wanted. <laughs> so, so I would ask anyone called Lorraine to stand up. So there is no misunderstanding. We've only got another show to go. So there is no misunderstanding. This must be fair. Are you the Lorraine that likes the Eagles and Dire Straits? Yes. Are you the Lorraine that has a black alpha Romeo? Are you the, are you, 
Are you the Lorraine who's just bought some new shoes that are plum coloured? No. Oh! oh. What colour are they then? Plumish. Plumish. <laughs> are you the Lorraine that's got a finger pointing straight at her? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Lorraine. <laughs> now I know what the Mountie feels like. I, well, I finally got my man in the end. OK. Right. The control questions will sort this out pretty quickly so the machinery can tell whether or not you're lying. Is your name Lorraine Gibson Barton? Yes. Did Beethoven write Beethoven's Fifth? He might have done. <laughs> yes. Are we going to be a little cocky tonight? No. <laughs> Is Sydney Harbour Bridge in Sydney? Yes. OK. We've got the questions we wanted. You seem very relaxed, so this is a good sign. And here comes the truth that we are going to try and wheedle out from Lorraine. There, there we go. <laughs> Calm yourselves. Calm yourselves, villagers, please. Oh, they're, they're a wild bunch tonight. They're baying for blood tonight. <laughs> so here we go. Remember, it's yes or no, no pies, no lies, no prize, no prize. No Did you go to Ireland and tell everyone that you'd missed the plane home when really you hadn't even been to the airport and you just decided to have a longer holiday? No. <laughs> Have you ever been told off by a British rail guard? No, definitely not. If you had, what would it have been for? I can't imagine. Snogging? No. <laughs> now, the quicker you answer this question, the less I will tell. Lorraine, do you have a tattoo? No. Where is it? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Oh, never mind. Two. Go on, you tell me one of them. Um, on my shoulder. Yeah, yeah, all right. We won't mention the one you're sitting on. <laughs> well, <laughs> is there anything radically different about your appearance now from, say, two years ago? No. Have you, have you ever told somebody that you've fallen off a train? Never. Can you... Can you, can you give me the number of a good surgeon, Lorraine? No. No. <laughs> Here's the big pork pie. Did you, Lorraine, tell your mum you'd fallen off a train when really you'd been for a nose job? No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> You're cruel. I'm not cruel. It wasn't me who shopped you. Who, who shopped you? My mum. It was your mum, yes. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Just lean forward a little bit. I just want to sort of... Uh, it's good, isn't it? What do you reckon? It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. What do they build with the bits that were left over? Sydney Harbour Bridge, yeah. <laughs> Have you had any other bits done? Uh, I'll tell you later. Oh, great. <laughs> well done. I'll show you the tattoo as well. Oh! <laughs> what a shame. I've got to go downstairs. Wait till I get you home with Brendan! Welcome Heather and John Short. We're playing for a basket of apples here. <laughs> What's Mum's biggest ambition? Did he say, oh no, to star as Desdemona in Othello at Stratford? <laughs> or to play the cello in a recital at the Royal Festival Hall? To be dragged out of the water by the men on Baywatch? <laughs> I remember. There was Six hunky love gods. <laughs> yeah? Demonstrating. And Heather. Let forward, but uh, they chose somebody a bit younger, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Wow. Oh, I mean, right. do you want us to go Looks away like while you animal. talk about this? <laughs> I think she would like to be saved by some of the men on Baywatch. She would like to go. Yeah, she would like to go and drown, and then some of the people would save her. What would she like to happen then? She'd probably like to give her mouth to mouth and <laughs> pretend she was dying. And then what? She'd probably just say. Thank you, that was a nice experience. <laughs> to do that again. It's the Quickly Modern Telephone Directory! <laughs> I asked if there was anything about the way Mum looked that she'd like to change. <laughs> Did he say, plenty? <laughs> no, she thinks she's perfect. There's more of her than she likes. <laughs> I don't say. <laughs> I'll pass on this one. Yeah. A, B or C? I think we go for C. Yes. <laughs> There's more of her than she likes. <laughs> she's a fat normal, but she's... she's a bit fat. <laughs> I'll tell you the story. In January, when she took my brother fishing, she slipped on some wet, slippery grass. This was in January, and she broke her leg. She hasn't been, like, doing jogging ever since and keep fit, so now she's got a bit... Good so we go on for the gnome. <laughs> Does Dad fancy anyone on TV? Did Brendan say only the women? <laughs> Phyllis Pierce? <laughs> Annika Rice? Oh, only the women. You know the girls that do belly wobble dance? Yeah. He likes them. How do you know? Well, you can see his face. He's like, oh, belly wobble dances. <laughs> you think? Mum ever does a bit of belly wobble dancing for your dad? Oh, she's got the belly for it. He was doing so well and he's dropped in so many at the last moment. Brendan, come down! <laughs> what did you say you, you wanted if uh, you lived to be uh, older than today? <laughs> Bike. We've got some forfeits and I'll tell you what's in there. I must not play basketball when I'm supposed to be getting ready for bed from now on. I must willingly help with household chores for the whole of the next month. <laughs> I must play tennis every evening after school for a fortnight. What's it going to be? I must play tennis after school every fortnight. <laughs> 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 Come here. Yeah. I must willingly help with household <laughs> Bad boy. You better get on this bike. Too sweet. Here it is. Your own bike. You better pedal it fast. The safety gear's there. Have fun, Brendan. Great to meet you. Gotcha. I've got to tell you about this gotcha because it was just such an amazing situation that John Pertwee goes through a one hour radio show and he has absolutely no idea that it is a gotcha and when I arrive at the very end he's telling me all about it and he's saying for goodness sake never work for this radio station again because <laughs> it's been a complete shambles and I even give him the trophy and he's t it's coming in just a while NTV could make you a star in... <laughs> Excuse me a moment. Most unlikely doorbell. <laughs> it's the it's the crinkly bottom actor chappy. He does love a very grand entrance. <laughs> hey, nonny, nonny, no, no, darling. <laughs> yes, Tell me, with a ghost thou. <laughs> Doesn't he? Doesn't he talk nice? I really like it. Pardon? <laughs> well, next week is your last party here. And then it's off to the wide blue yonder. But to what? 
the scrap heap of life, oblivion, the land of forgotten stars. Oh, yeah, all right, all right, all right, hang on a moment. The BBC will find me something to do. Yes, what did they say? Well, they just said, don't phone us, we'll phone you. But, um... <laughs> ah, yes, the BBC, they told me, I've got the energy of the young Gilgood. I've got the voice of the young Gilgood. I've got the acting ability of the young Gilgood. But, but? I've got the body of the old Gilgood. <laughs> I'm all right because I have got myself a fantastic summer tour. It's one of those two-handed drama extravaganzas in outdoor venues. Oh, which one are you, Punch or Judy? <laughs> Well, I can tell you where I'm going. Where? Hollywood. I've got this wonderful idea for a film about a boxer who, desperate for money, returns to the ring just one last time. Yeah? I shall call it Rocky. Yeah. Yes, he, he's been done. Oh, no, really? Yeah. Oh, well, in that case, I shall call it... I shall call it Rocky Two. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's been done as well. <laughs> now, don't you think you're just a little old to play Rocky? <laughs> I'm not going to play it. I've got someone else in mind. Someone who's perfect for the part. Handsome, brooding, magnificently built. <laughs> Early, my dear. <laughs> Noli, Noli. I, I know we're acting, but now you're being ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, well you. I have found a young man who will reach great heights. <laughs> Yes, yes, that's Sammy the Shammy. He's... He's the window cleaner. He... He cleans the windows. I know, I know. I've been talking to him. Yes, yes. Uh... <laughs> Save yourself, dear boy. <laughs> now, we're just going to catch our plane. He's going to Hollywood. Oh, are you directing him? No, I think the pilot will know the way. <laughs> now, here's an extract from one of our scenes. <laughs> oh. Ha! Is that a cannon that I hear? No, I dropped me bucket. <laughs> Drop it again, Sam. <laughs> you dirty rat. Don't push me. It's life, Jim, but not as we know it. Come on, Book him, Dado. Murder one. Uh, I tore, I tore, I put it out. Yeah, yeah. uh, oh, come on, Sam Kingston. Let's go and go. I really am, uh, I really am frightfully sorry about that. I... <laughs> Queen. It's got to be Cliff the Morris dancer, but you've got the votes. You have the power. Who's in the lit? It's neck and neck, but he's just there. Just but close. Please, please, please. Phone. Shake your leg a bit. 0891 800 311 if you think it should be the Morris dancer. 0891 800 322 if you feel that it should be the Pearly Queen. I don't believe you can. Shake your leg again. Something will happen. It will go away. It's time to grab a grand. About that. Now, the question we were asking last week was about the uh, third round of the FA Cup and the match between Chelsea and Wolves, and I wanted to know <laughs> the birth sign of the first person to take a corner kick, and it turned out to be Chelsea and Dennis Wise, who is Sagittarius, and would you, it was close. Wow, was it close this week? We only had 2,000 winners. <laughs> it's the biggest number that we've had ever. You're up there again. Look, there's 2,000 over there. Sharon Parsley and Robert Mills, Elaine Ellens, Corinne Hutchins, Lisa Bryan, all sorts of people there. And I shall stop it at that point there and pray that Marion Childers in Swindon, I don't know why anyone should want to uh, cheer the name Marion Childers. That's, of course, Marion Childers is here in Crinkly Bottom at the moment. There we go. Hello. Hello, Marion. It is, yes. Hello. Hello. Oh, it's nice to be talking to you. Oh, it's wonderful to talk to you. So, are you Chelsea or Wolves or just after the money? No, we're, we're Swindon, actually. We had a wonderful result this afternoon. Oh, right, good. <laughs> Excellent for you. <laughs> now, who do you think ought to be guns? Do you think that it ought to be the uh, Morris dancers or do you think that it should be the Pearly, Pearly Queen? Well, from being that we're like from Swindon, I think it ought to be the Pearly Queen. Oh. Oh, right. Talk to you later. <laughs> now, the question... <laughs> the question for this week... 
You know, you know Sarge from Crinkley Bottom Police Station? Well, he's driving this year in the IndyCar series under the name of Nigel Mansell. And <laughs> the first race of the series is at Surfers Paradise tomorrow. Now, he's on pole position, but which lap will he make his first pit stop? Which lap will he make his first scheduled pit stop? His first pit stop. We could crash on lap one and not make a pit stop. I leave you with the dilemma. It's 0891 800 300. 0891 800 300. You could be in the money on the last house party next week. Now, a wonderful moment, a magnificent moment, ladies and gentlemen, from the recent arts festival here in Crinkley Bottom. Once again, we had the vicar and the beautiful vicar's wife, Monica Jews, and Vince judging. Well, of course, our proud village of Crinkley Bottom is now twinned with the Australian town of Gooley End. And as part of a... <laughs> as, part of the, please, as part of this year's very serious cultural exchange, we have sent them last year's festival winner, who was Mary Rule Britannia Smith. And in return, we have got Mr Yodel and Edward Foxhead! to go first. Get off. <laughs> and all, uh, scores, please. Three, two, nothing. <laughs> 26. <laughs> I'll tell you the rest of an interesting story in a moment. But how shall we go over to this week's star of NTV? Shall we... Um, ah, now, what we've actually done is we have shown a temporary fault sign on his set. That's what he's seeing at this moment. It's John Petrie, who is in Falkirk, and until literally ten seconds ago, he wasn't even in the house. He hadn't come home, and we were panicking like that. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to phone him up and his wife's going to hand in a phone. I put his phone number into there, and uh, it's going to pre-dial the thing through. And you can see him. There, that's his house. There he. Oh, he's. he's... Hello. 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 Um, this is Glasgow uh, Central Technology Centre. Um, we have a transmission blackout with television of BBC this evening. Have you got a picture, sir? No. Could you just tell me, it would, it would be enormously useful if you could tell me whether or not you've got a picture on your set or whether you're getting our temporary fault sign. With the high winds and the snow recently, we've had a lot of problems with weather. Uh -huh. Could you tell me what you've got on your screen, please? Uh -huh. <laughs> could you? I'd be terribly grateful if you could actually tell me what's on your um, television screen. Well, it's not Mr Edmonds, that's for sure. I beg your pardon? It's not Mr Edmonds. Ah, do you normally watch House Party? Sometimes, eh? Uh, jolly good. Could you tell me whether you're getting house party now? Because in the rest of the Falkirk area, I think we are switched back on. Not on the television. I think you might be on the phone, though. Sorry? I think you might be on the phone. Oh, I see. Oh. Bother. <laughs> right. Um, do you want to just go back in your room, uh, John? Because the rest of Britain's looking at your room and... Um... You're joking. And... <laughs> thinking, what the hell is this cable below the phone? Yeah, well, I'm afraid that's our cable. Could you go back in your room, because we can see your wife at the moment, but we can't see you. Well, you're kidding me, are No, we're not putting you on. I, I can assure you, you frighten me more than I will ever frighten you. <laughs> right, there we are. Hi. Hello, John. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Sit down. Sit down so that we've got you. There we are. We've, we've got you all right. Hello, John Petrie and Falkirk. Hello. All right? What's wrong? You, you're not talking to me now. You were talking on the phone. What, what's wrong, John? Nothing. No, nothing, I think. OK. Well, here's a picture of him when he was a very little boy. John, pay attention to the pictures. There we are. Oh. Right, OK. And then he grew up and, and he got into a, a looking like that. And then I think he went through a stage of being a bit of an awkward teenager. And then he became 
Certainly a man who knew which way to go in life. He wanted to go that way. The only funny thing is that every picture I've got of you, John, shows you doing that almost wherever you are. Now, John, Hi. are you... Hello, John, you're not really giving this your full attention. Really? John Petrie of Falkirk, I charge you that on one occasion you did take your mother's chocolates, you removed the cellophane wrapper, you cut it with a razor blade so she wouldn't notice, took all the chocolates out, ate them, and put the cellophane wrapper back on the box. How do you please? Obviously me, no. <laughs> Am I right in thinking that when you were an altar boy, you removed the plunger inside all the boys' bells, I hope I got that the right way around. So that when they went like that, <laughs> the plunger fell out. Am I right, John? Not guilty. Am I right in thinking that the class at school had a pet mouse called Jeremy and you killed it? Me? <laughs> no? <laughs> who are these people who keep walking in and out, John? I have no idea. What are they doing? They're, ta they're taking over my home. What, what are they, what exactly, oh? I think what they're moving home and nobody's told me. Oh, right. <laughs> Didn't we tell you you're moving home? Oh. <laughs> oh, how remiss of us. You see, we know so much of, that's it, if you'd sit down there, please, John. We, we know so much about you. Have you had a good week? I know, bad. Where were you during the first part of the show when we have been running around Crinkly Bottom terrified because we didn't think we'd got an NTV? Where were you? I was in Bonnybridge. How were you? About five miles that way. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> John, did anything funny happen to you this week that you, you can remember? There was a guy who tried to get me to speak to his wife on a mobile phone. Yes. Yes. You'll be pleased to know that wasn't us. But thank you very much indeed for your tremendous contribution to the Crinkly Bottom Health Farm and its new brochure. It's, it's luxury brochure. Do you remember taking uh, quite a bit of time with the photographer? No. Down at your gym. <laughs> Do you remember those pictures taken this week? And don't deny it because here we have the vi video evidence that that photo shoot took place this week. Is this your gym? Is yes. that you in the gym? Yes. Do you remember that occasion? Yes. Over there. <laughs> And you weren't, you weren't at all suspicious about that, were you? Uh, no. No? So I ask you again, did anything else strange happen to you this week, John? Uh, we had a, a, a drummer audition for the band, an old guy. Yeah? Yeah. What did you do with you, was it? Yeah, he was our guy. Was he? Yeah, he, he was our guy. And, and also you had a problem with your car. So I did, I, the, the women outside, eh? Yeah. Uh, the lady outside who boxed your car in. See, eh? Yeah. This is what happened. What I was baffled about was how this whole saga took half an hour because the car is boxing you in. I'm sorry, my car doesn't seem to start. You couldn't have a quick look, could you, on the face? I mean, oh. And you point out you know nothing about cars, but instead of just pushing the car out of the way so you can go to work, you then, for the next half an hour, push it round in circles. <laughs> Were you trying to bump start an automatic? No. I had no idea what I was doing. I know nothing about them. Yeah. God will be looking down on you, Descent. We are fascinated, John. I will push this point. We want to know why you just kept pushing it around. Did you fancy her or something? <laughs> no, I thought I'd get it away. That was it. Yeah. And you got it Yay! going. Oh, I never got it going. Oh, well done. Thanks. Well, the guy across the road that got it going. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he found the wire that we'd disconnected on her car. Yeah. Right then. So, um... Oh, what a lonely sight that makes. We, we seem to have emptied your room. Have you any you idea why? I have no idea, no. Are you a qualified musician? No. Excellent. <laughs> Just what we wanted you to say. We'll be back for a command performance very shortly. John Petrie in Falkirk. It'll look a bit different when we go next time. Thank you for the tens of thousands of calls, so let's see who it is. Please let it be the Morris Dancer, please. It can't be the Pearly Queen. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I think that's what you call reverse voting. If you'd like to come over here, you got away with it, oh, Cliff. Well done. <laughs> Excellent. Great. Thanks for that tenor you gave me. It worked, didn't it? Right, and you'd like to get on there. Does the hat come off? Uh, no. Yes, it <laughs> Of course the hat comes off. Right. OK, Barbie, here's your big moment. The Pearly Queen gets it. You voted for it. It wasn't the Morris dancer, it was the Pearly Queen. Brace yourself. Here it comes. The Lambert Court we go. <laughs> really good. It's great. It was a super radio show, wasn't it? I could kill you. <laughs> Don't say that. I thought I was a very perspicacious man, and I, how I fell for that, I shall never know. An hour of agony. It was a radio show, not unlike Desert Island Discs, but John was being asked to uh, choose his favourite music and also take various phone-in questions as well. Uh, to complicate the matter, and so you fully appreciate his dilemma, we lied to him like mad on behalf of the presenter of the programme, who was in Manchester. Well, actually, he was in the office upstairs, but you thought he was in Manchester. Yes. You were in Oxford. Yes. And we tried to persuade John to pretend the two of them were in the same room. Hence, there were references to what John was wearing. And when it all goes wrong, of course, you have to bear in mind that John is apparently with the presenter in the room. But all he's got to talk to is an engineer who is very unhelpful. We also had completely chucked out your list of records. And um, we were trying to persuade John to say nice things about records he hated. <laughs> Particularly, there was a bit with the Dubliners, which you will absolutely love. We start, there's a leaking roof as well, by the way. We start with the pre production chat, and they were about to go live on air with a most peculiar presenter who's not in Manchester. So, you got all your records sorted out? Oh, sort of. I, I'm one of the few people who did um, Desert Island Discs twice. <laughs> uh, this is David Madsen with my favourite records, and I'm delighted to say with me in the studio this afternoon as an accomplished actor in TV films and on stage, famous for commercials, uh, star of Carry On films, but uh, I hope he won't mind me saying probably most famous for Doctor Who and Wurzel Gummidge, John Pertwee. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We can forget about the carry-on, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, right. That was purely a piece of joy. Right. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I won't remind you about the carry-on. No. Um, you've got quite a taste in bright clothes, if I may say. Uh, I that's an extremely so, yes. bright red shirt uh, that is dazzling me at this moment. <laughs> can we go straight away for your first musical choice? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, Dolly Parton, I Will Always Love You. Can I say why? Yes, yes, please. Well, maybe after the record. Right. After the record. But I will I hope you didn't mind me chatting to you all the way through that because uh, I, uh, I'm fascinated by, by your career and I'm fascinated by the fact that uh, you were on Desert Island Discs uh, twice. Uh, you must be absolutely delighted that uh, Dad's Army is having such a resurgence at the moment. Why am I delighted? Uh, well, because I imagine you get residuals and, uh, you, you know... You've got the wrong man, David. That's my cousin, Bill Pertwee. Well, my sincere apologies for the Not mixture. at all. No, that's Bill Pertwee. He's I, my cousin. D do other people make that, that foolish error? No. Oh, <laughs> right, you're, you're an original. Thank you for putting me at my ease there. Uh, I... How did you know I'd done Desert Island Discs twice? <laughs> I don't know, that's absolutely extraordinary. Was it, was it the lady who told me? Our favourite uh, was Wurzel Gummidge. And um, did you make up the voice yourself, or were you told uh, what to do? No, I, I may, you see, it's, all, it, it, it's whether, you, whether you've got the right ear or not, my dear, you see. Oh. If you've got the right ear, it, all, it goes in the one way and comes out the other. And, it, and you hope it comes out right. Thank you very much. Not at all, nice to talk to you. Bye-bye. Bye. Still to come in John's selection, Sinead O'Connor, Nothing Compares to You. 
surprisingly, Una Paloma Blanca. What made you wish to choose that? I didn't. Oh. No, I, I chose nothing compares to you. I have on my list that you wanted Una Paloma Blanca. No, no I hate it. Am I right with the Schumann's piano music? Is that also what you want? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Elizabeth Schumann. Great. Somewhere along the line it comes out as Schumann's piano music. <laughs> well, uh, am I right with Joseph Locke and hear my song? No, you're wrong. No, you, you're... Uh, what, I, what I asked for was uh, Ernest Lush, the great boy, treble singer, singing Hear My Prayer. Right. Well, unfortunately, we don't have it now. Uh, oh. We do have Joseph Locke. Um, well, don't play that music. <laughs> on your list you said any full Irish band. Yeah. Excellent. Drink up your tea and enjoy the Dubliners. <laughs> I love that, that wooden thing on that very big rock. Yes, it's, uh, <laughs> it's like ten rings. Yes. And it's leaping around big. to the Dubliners. Do you, do, do you find that when you're out walking d down the street that people reckon... You, you've gone. Privacy. I just wonder whether when you're stopped and you're, and you're asked for an autograph... We, we, uh, can you hear me? C hello, hello, hello. Keep talking. Oh, right. Uh, th yes, do, am I recognised? Sure, I'm, um, I'm recognised if I'm not wearing a baseball cap and glasses more often because of my hair. Sorry, the line's gone down. We've got to keep on um, putting across the idea that David's here, right? Okay. Now, um, when I fade this out, if you can uh, keep going. No, I can't do that. No. I wonder whether we can just carry on as if David's here for the moment. Whether you can make some comment about this record. Uh, is, uh, it's one of your favourites. Is that possible? Well, it isn't. I hate it. No. Uh, yes. yes <laughs> David, we've got Manchester back. We've got Manchester back. You have very uh, Catholic tastes in music, John. Yeah. What emotion is unleashed by that last one, Engelbert Humperdinck? Uh, very little. Uh, yeah, let's go on to the next one. Right. Oh, water. Yeah, that's why the bucket's there. I'm just going to... <laughs> well, this is an interesting afternoon. Excellent. You've got to call from Alex Myers in Crystal. What was? The, the only movie I know of Dracula that you did with Christopher Lee. Uh, it was called The House That Dripped Blood. That's the one. That's yeah. the one. And it what, was... What's that dripping there? What's that dripping? Oh, you can hear it, can you? You can hear something. The, well, it's blood. an interesting it's in... thing. The, the roof is leaking. Oh, then you went on to do Sherlock Holmes. Uh, Sherlock, no. You did? Did Hang I? Hang on a moment. Hang on. Okay! <laughs> <laughs> Marty! You said he was Peter Cushing! I'll take another call here from London. Cushing. Sarah Moss. Sarah so he's Peter Cushing. Yes, well, forget that. Sarah Moss in London. Oh, this is a very... I must say, this is the most interesting programme, David. I enjoyed that this afternoon, with the water pouring in on our heads and, and getting everything muffled. It's been a lot of fun. Good night. Goodbye. Thank you. We've got um, yes. John Craven and Noel Edmonds about the travel show. They're oh, coming right, yes, in. they're doing that. Can you hang sure. on? Noel? Photos. Noel John Edmonds Craven is here. And Noel no Edmonds are doing travel yeah, shows. Yes, they're going to come Oh, in lovely. So oh, I look forward to it. Hang on for a photo. Yeah. <laughs> dee, 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 dee. How are you? You haven't. You haven't. Yeah. All right. What have you been doing? We've been doing my choice of records. But the whole thing's been extremely funny. But the people rang up and said, Right, were you, were, were you in, when did Sherlock Holmes then? I said, No, I've never been in Sherlock Holmes. And then he said, Martin, you fool! You said it was Peter Cushing! <laughs> I said, No, I'm not Peter That's for you. Oh, no! Well, that's lovely. That's called the. Gotcha. The Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that splendid? We, we I it. love that one you did with the. Uh, the, 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 the yeah, yeah. Do, you think, do you think yours is as funny as that? Oh, you haven't captured me. Exactly. Well, we are today. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> so all this is not <laughs> is it? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Oh,
that was brilliant. I thought the way you cope with that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm well mannered. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> John Pertwee, got you with pleasure. And it's Lionel Blair and the Lionel Blair stare. Or is it a glare? It's certainly a classic gotcha, but now we've got our NTV command performance. And John, up in Falkirk, has possibly gathered himself together. When we last saw him, he was looking a little lonely in his room. This is how he looked the last time we saw him. He was, uh, he was all by himself. But now, everything all right, John? Aye, no bad, no bad. Jolly good. Well, uh, what, if, what are you going to do for us up there? Well, a bit of this, a bit of that. A bit yeah, of that. jolly good. Okay, well, the sooner you get on with a little bit and a lefty little bit... <laughs> I'm so suspicious, John. If you think you're worried, there's so much smoke in this studio. I don't know what the heck's going on. But I'll keep going. Go on, John, let's have a command performance. <laughs> you back now? Yes, please. Yeah, okay, John Petrie. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. <laughs> What do, you, what, what do you want to use the money for? Um, I'd like to visit America, sir. You'd like to visit America? Yes. I can offer you 30,000 crinkly bottom groats. They've been uh, achieving parity with the Estonian Kroon this <laughs> week. I don't know whether you noticed. 50,000 Philippine pesos or 70,000 Belgian francs. Which do you want to go for? Oh, I think I'll go for the groats. Yes! Well done! 1,485. She's been a world champion, a European champion, but at what? Well, six times winner of badminton. Please welcome Lucinda Green! <laughs> You've got the excuse to wear a tracksuit. Fire away, you're talking to Marion. OK, hi Marion. Hello. Um, <coughs> think of what goes on your shirt front. What was the name of the dog that was crowned Craft Supreme Champion recently? Boiled egg. Rubbish. Well, that goes down your front sometimes, because if you're going to... Mm. Think of what does your shirt up. Quick. No. Yeah, Buttons, yes, I'll do. Go on. OK, okay. after no. three... Yes! Cheat. Go after on. three daughters, who became the father of a boy? Earl Spencer. Yes. Very good. Who will host the Oscars on Monday night? Whoopi Goldberg. You've yes, just get a full minute quick in there. We go. Because he was only saying no because we're running out of time, Lucinda. If you'd like to get in there as quick as possible, shut the door. Isn't she good? And there we go. Right the full minute. <laughs> Come 
on this road. Now, I'll tell you what's meant to happen is Lucinda and I go over here, she weighs the money, then we'll do the conversion, and then I have 30 seconds to say goodnight, but I know that's not what's going to happen because something strange has just occurred over there. This is horrid. They're going to do something horrible to me. I want to go. I want to go. Quick, I'm gonna, the quicker you go in there, I'm going to belt out of the house so fast. <laughs> right, is that it? OK, we're on the great... Marion, don't go away, Lucinda. You'll find out what we've done. 12,000. You can have a word with Marion. 12,000. 12,000 of a conversion. I'm going to go out that front door. 576. Next week's the last show. We've got the Lionel Blair next week. What's up? Tell the word of course. A double P L A U S C. What does that stand for? A pork pie lies awaiting unsuspecting silly Edmonds. Yeah! <laughs> We have you where we want you now. The fib frame on, the porky talky in place. You know it's, it's sensitive to vocal vibrations. We need three control questions so your voice stress analyzer can adjust. Would you please tell the truth now, Noel? Do you now, or have you ever understood the rules of the big pork pie? Yes. You could have fooled us. Number two, are you nervous about what's going to happen to you? Yes. Yes, yes. I thought I could smell terror. <laughs> Third control question, is your middle name Ernest? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest, here is the truth that he will try to hide from you, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no. You've seen Ernie Wise, now you can see Ernie lies here. Oh, no. No lies, no pies, no oh, pies. Oh, they're very cool. <laughs> Did you once consider changing your name to Noel Van Diemen, yes. or worse, Randy West, so yes. you could open your shows by saying, Hi, I'm Randy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no lies, no pies. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're, you're oh, no. To lie. <laughs> that was not a corker of a pork. Did you, did you once drive oh, to your good. hair... I wish I'd what? thought of that. That's did very you good. once <laughs> drive to your hairdressers, Noel, for a <laughs> highlighting session in a Morris Minor so you wouldn't be recognised? Uh, yes. <laughs> Oh, he's telling, the, he's telling the truth. You're supposed to lie on this note. You don't understand the rules at all. Is it true that you just adore dressing up in glamorous gear? No. Oh, uh, really? How, how do you explain this? How do you explain this picture of yourself? Are you sure your middle name isn't Ernestine? <laughs> oh, God. Those people you want to pretend you were injured and turn up at a fa an award ceremony with a bandaged leg just to avoid dancing with Princess Anne? No. Oh, you are. Oh, oh, oh. oh, just a second. I think a messenger is coming from the palace. Uh, would, over there, I think, Frankie. Would you please read that out for us, Noel? What does it say? <laughs> what does it say? <laughs> Hi, Randy, I'm still waiting for my dance. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you are, you're right. And now the big one! Did you, Noel Ernest Edmonds, think that singing You Don't Bring Me Flowers was not enough, and now secretly dream of singing and dancing like Tom Jones, so much so, you even lie back in the bath practising It's Not Unusual in the overhead mirror? <laughs> I had the mental picture of you, Noel Ernie Edmonds, <laughs> lying looking at your nude reflection. You are a horrid man. Singing, it's not unusual. <laughs> I am happy that this is a gotcha par excellence. Gotcha, Noel Edmonds. Say goodnight. <laughs> I don't know why Monkhouse can't open my door.
fancy singing like me, do you? <laughs> you think you can do it, do you? No. You think you can do it? It's not unusual, do you? Please. Well, come with no, me. Come here. No more. No more. To be loved by anyone He's not unused You want to have fun with anyone But then I see you Hanging about with anyone He's not unused You want to see me cry I want to die You see, it's as simple as that Right, see, you got it? Yeah, you'll have to come nearer with the you words Last time we you saw them <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're in black and I'm in red, okay? <laughs> you gonna have a go? <laughs> you gonna have a go at it? Yeah, okay, right, right, right okay. let's do it. All right. Now, it's not unusual to be loved by anyone. It's not unusual to have fun with anyone. But when I see you hanging about with anyone, Oh, we got it. The one that I see you hanging. Where, where are we okay, at? Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Okay, oh, you no. got the same, it's not bad. Now we got to concentrate on the moves. Okay? Like this. Well, we must be off the air now. I'm sad to say, uh, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. And I think... <laughs> I think it will have to be uh, gunged, is the word. Gunged is the word. Gunged is the word. Which way are we going? Which way are we going? Which way are we going? Step up. Sit down. <laughs> Come on. All right. Can I, uh, am I allowed to say anything? You can. Do you want it? Just wanted to say it. Then you've got to come through. All right. You did it. Very Thank good. you. You got it. I'll take it as a compliment. Thank you. 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 Thank <laughs> you.